Na 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 na. Banter. Banter. Yeah, we could fit. We could do that. You, I'll I'll read it out and then you start with na uh, and then just say banter. I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> let's ju- let's just start it. Shall I start now? <laughs> yeah. Do it. Good morning, Vietnam. <laughs> Power in the verse can stop me. What's going on, guys? My name is Elden Nero, and welcome to episode 25 of the Midnight Hour. Boom! We're in. You're on in that. Yeah. It's, it's been a while. It's been a while, but I'm back with a bang. How, how long has it been? Like three weeks? Uh, I don't know. It's been for a few weeks. I don't know. I don't go this way. Don't go. Yeah, it's yeah. been. It's been a while. If you've ever had a conversation with yourself, you'd understand why. <laughs> well. well. Um. But yeah, this is episode number 25. That's like a quarter of a century, so I believe we're now old enough to do everything in the <coughs> eyes of law, aren't we? Um, uh, I'd, yeah, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, yeah I'd do anything. I mean, obviously, <laughs> <laughs> Jack has done some questionable things, you know, before, so. Even before he was 18, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've had a questionable life. That's life very true. On 25. You have a questionable personality. <laughs> well... And a questionable taste in 80s music. It's not questionable, it's pretty yeah, substantial. It's, yeah. <laughs> right. This that's, is not really good, that's not a really good description. I think substantial just means a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the topic for today's episode is things <clears throat> that could have been. I guess that's kind of a very vague description, but I like to keep it vague because then I can do more. I can have more freedom in what I talk about. Um, We're going to talk about things that almost became great or that almost became anything at all or things that could have been great, but they were cut short in their prime, um, unfairly so or otherwise. And that's just that. So um, I wanted to start off talking about Firefly, which is a... uh, a TV show, it's like a science fiction show created by Joss Whedon, and despite getting almost 5 million viewers every week, it was cancelled because Fox are a bunch of incompetent bastards, basically. Um, we got they f- cancelled uh, Family Guy twice? Is that it, yeah, that's true, yeah. That was brought back with uh, DVD sales, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Well, like, yeah. Firefly has an unbelievably massive, like, cult status. Like, it has such a cult status that it's not even a cult <coughs> show. Why was it cancelled? Um, basically what happened was they aired episode two instead of episode one <laughs> and that made That's it difficult. No, that made it difficult for people to catch up and, and just have a clue what was going on. And, if uh, I, if I run a TV channel, I'd do that. I'd just air episodes in random order. <laughs> That's brilliant. It's probably not a good way to go about things, but it's, yeah, you a... probably wouldn't be in the business of TV very long, Jack, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't think I'd ever be let into an on-air studio. I mean, this is about as close as she did as I'll get, I think. And even then, like, your, we, your we, bedroom. <laughs> we have to cut about 80% of what Jack says. It doesn't actually make it to the show at all. So um, that's the thing that happens. At, at the end of this season, there'll be an, outco- an outtake thing. Yeah, and it's just going to be four hours of Jack <laughs> talking about stuff. It's just going to be four hours of Jack cutting up cocaine in his room. <laughs> <laughs> this it doesn't really make a noise. Um... But yeah, like Firefly was really good. You guys have never seen it, though, have you? No. no. Yeah, I've, so. I've, I've, I mean, I'm browse. i on Reddit a lot. I love Reddit. And they always talk about it. So I assume it must be somewhat decent. Oh, it's very, very good. Like, it, it's like the, the first episode, you'll watch it and you'll be like, yeah, I can see where this is going. And then it just, it like encapsulates everything that I love about science fiction. Like, it has all of the good parts of Star Wars and Star Trek. And also like a lot of awesome, like Western type scenes. It's like a, it's like a Western set in space. But um, it's so cool. Like, the main guy in it, Malcolm Reynolds, is um, a lot like Han Solo, who is obviously a hero anyway. Um, and they do a lot of intergalactic travel and shit. Like, it's set 500 years from now, and all of these new planets have been terraformed. 
so that they're uh, able to be ha- inhabited by humans. I, I really just wanted to say the word terraformed. That's the only reason no. I explained it. Yeah, all. I, I yeah. don't really understand what it means. Yeah, I, I didn't expect that you would. It's like terrified, except only in the way that it sounds. It's nothing like that at all. Um, <laughs> it's yeah, to do with changing a planet to... Sue no. us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, purpose, purpose built. Purpose built to sustain human life, yeah. Yes. So Ooh. basically the opposite of Essex at the moment. Um, yeah. We got a movie out of it called Serenity, which was like, I, I think that's the last that we'll ever see from that world that Joss Whedon made, because obviously they all went on to bigger and better things. Uh, well, Joss Whedon definitely did. He directed Avengers and various other movies. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's the greatest thing ever, and it should have never been cancelled, because it's actually too good to have been cancelled, and it has way too big a fan base. Like, I guarantee you, if Netflix reinvigorated it themselves the way they did with uh, Arrested Development, you'd see the subscription numbers go up and up and up, so... But don't you think with a fan base like that, they could do, like, a Kickstarter thing? And that That's, like, launched a lot of stuff, that Kickstarter, hasn't it? Do you know... I don't even think it's the money anymore. I think it's like oh, right. Joss Whedon is doing Avengers 2, Age of Ultron, isn't he? And, yeah. you know, they've all got other things going on, but um, collectively, the cast, they just make up one of the greatest sort of cast of characters in a movie or in a TV series. Like, he originally pitched it as nine people staring into the blackness of space and seeing nine different things. And, like, if that doesn't catch your interest, then, you know. Is, is it an ensemble cast, not just sort of Nathan Fillion's show? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's about all of the people. Like, my favorite character in it was the one played by Summer Glau. And uh, I think only the diehard fans of The Midnight Hour will know this, but at the start of every episode, you can hear a woman saying, no power in the verse can stop me. And that's yeah, Summer yeah. Glau saying that in, uh, oh. in Firefly. Um. But yeah, that's. I, I just wanted to talk about Firefly. You know, it was recommended to me by one of my subscribers, or at least one of my Twitter followers. Um, I, I can't remember. I think his name was Tyler, or that was the name he went by on Twitter. Um, but he hasn't been around for a while, or he hasn't tweeted me in a while. I don't know. Oh, I pay. Yeah. But um, he, he was the one who told me to watch it, because I knew from his tweets to me previously that he's got a good taste with stuff like that, and he gets my weird obsession with space. Uh, so I watched it because of him and haven't looked back since. I'm actually watching it for the second time right now. As we're recording this, I'm watching it right now. I'm not even yeah. listening to it. I'm just reading off a script while watching it. So The thing is, I don't, I'm not sure I want to watch it now. Oh, I definitely I want to watch it. Reminds it. Me. No, not only because it's just it's something that hasn't... It, is a, it was a thing and it was amazing, but they just kind of stopped it. It's It's not unfulfilled potential, though... In the sense that... Is it great in its own respect as a first series and a standalone series? Absolutely, yeah. Like, every episode is a different story, and, you know... Is there, like, an overarching story, though? There's recurring characters, and, um, like, there are things you're aware of that exist in the universe that definitely come back, but that's the same as any TV show. Right, right, right. I mean, it's about Breaking Breaking Bad, but it was a necessity to watch... (laughs) <laughs> it's a documentary where they just split up band. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was necessity to watch the early seasons. Like yeah, absolutely. Two, even yeah. though they weren't necessarily good seasons. Well, with Firefly, it's like you want to watch the start so that you can get, you know, uh, up to date and introduced to the characters. But other than that, you could watch... Well, I mean, it's better to watch a series in the way that it goes, but Fox didn't even agree with that. They put episode two first, so... Um, you know, you... How, do they, how do they even do that? Because they wanted it was one episode. A mistake. Or... No, no, no. They wanted one episode to be the pilot episode because they thought it was the best one or something like that. Oh, right. I, I don't know. Like even the way that Fox advertised it, they advertised it as a comedy. Like they just hadn't a fucking clue what they were doing. I always no. think it's an amazing that that stuff like if if good stuff happens, it's amazing because you can often get like too many executives involved with sheets of paper going. This has to happen. This has. To you know and then it just fucks a load of shit up you know yeah it's just amazing that a tv show can be so good at least for one season because so many people get involved and then turn stuff to shit for those of you yeah. who don't know loose Moore actually acted as an executive for a major um television company in america yeah. that's how he knows that they have sheets of paper yeah 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 i had clipboards they have clipboards i was there i mean it's, it's just as unprofessional as his podcast really <laughs> yeah i don't think anything is as unprofessional <laughs> as this like we I don't know. We we do a terrible job, really. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's Firefly. You know, the movie like you can watch the series and then watch the movie. Do it in that order, and the movie is decent enough closure. You know, like it's fine as what it is. But you're obviously hungry for more, especially when I watched uh, Nathan Fillion doing this speech at Comic Con, um, and he's he sort of 
laid out the pitch for another episode and you could picture it all in your head like the characters doing the things that he was saying and all and uh that's why you want more of it is because they didn't use up all of their genius potential um in the first run and there's more good stuff to come if it were allowed to happen but it wasn't but it's still completely worth watching because it's amazing speaking of uh space operas and han solo uh did you know that al pacino was gonna be han solo I did not know this until like 15 minutes ago when you said oh, it to me. I said it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's... that's the 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 very small planning that we do for the podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're we're very bad. But um I've been planning a week. Yeah, you have. Yeah, Jack has brought literally n- uh, f- Shut up, Jack. Anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> tell us more about Al Pacino. What was the when was that in the 70s that must have been? Yeah, seventy-seven. He was—he was apparently offered the script and he took it and uh, looked at it and uh, apparently didn't understand any of it. So he, <laughs> so he turned it down. But I just think it'd be amazing, <clears throat> Al Pacino. Like Harrison Ford is like the ultimate cool sort of suave, uh, charming guy. Like yeah. you know, Han Solo, Indiana Jones. But Al Pacino as a Han Solo would have been amazing. I know it would have been brilliant. But yeah. I, what's even more brilliant is me imagining him taking the script and looking at it and going the hell is this what? this makes no sense and George I just Lucas like the uh, imagine like the car- you know when he's uh, being frozen in carbonite yeah he's there and he's going down the thing and Princess Leia's like I love you and then there's, it wouldn't be the same with Al Pacino yeah he'd just go wow or something like that it just wouldn't <laughs> make any sense it'd just be like <laughs> good Harrison Ford made up that line on the spot when he just said I know that was some- yeah, such just- a great line yeah I, I, I prefer someone saying I love you yeah is it a great line? Yeah, Carrie Fisher said, I love you. And Harrison Ford said, I know. And then went down into a pit but... where he's frozen in carbon. Oh. Yeah. How do you know that? Oh, yeah. Spoilers. Spoilers. Yeah. Spoilers. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I could watch this at one point. <laughs> yeah, if you've reached the age you have and you've not watched it by now, you're never going to watch I've it. I've watched most of the more recent Star Wars. Why? It's Star Wars, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Uh, my dad likes it. Well, he likes the new ones. No, he likes the old ones. So. I don't think the new ones are that bad. Nah, they're not. They're not terrible. But I mean, comparatively, they get a bad uh, rap because you know they're compared to some of the greatest movies of all time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Al Pacino as Harrison Ford would have been nuts, though. People Al Pacino always say as that, Harrison don't Ford. That was amazing. <clears throat> that's what I meant. Yes. <laughs> People say that can anything as, that's part of a trilogy or part of like a series of films. People always say can it. Can it actually be considered the best one of the best films? But it can, can't it? I think so. Well, you think, yeah, because people always say standalone films are what the best films are. But well, they often say like Godfather two or whatever. There's uh, not that many amazing trilogies in the world. Like there's the Godfather, there's Star Wars. What else? Like Harry Potter's not a trilogy. No, uh, it's a seven trilogy. Yeah. Yeah, that's, seven that's, that's the correct terminology. It is, yeah. That, that's um, yeah, I, 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 I'm struggling to think of any as well. There was uh, only two triple X movies made, isn't that right? Yeah, there's, there's only two. Yeah, so that doesn't that's, count. That doesn't count. Um, um, if they'd made triple X three, well, they have, haven't they? Because it's the porno. But um, <laughs> um, no, that's triple X cubed. <laughs> <laughs> that's like nine X's. No, it's not. It's like Jack. How many X's is that? 144 or something. 127. In what? What's that? <laughs> Never mind, Jack. Yeah. I know. My mind blanked out like half hour ago. Yeah, oh, that Jesus. doesn't surprise me. It wasn't half hour ago. It was about 30 seconds ago. You no, know, you wait. You can't get a, a, a definite figure for triple X cubed because you can't. It's an X, not a number. <laughs> yeah. We're doing some Which... weird algebra shit. That you have to find does. a value of X. That <laughs> <laughs> we haven't assigned a number. Yeah, two. So yeah, yeah. Let's just leave it there. Yeah. Um, I don't think anyone doubts that the Fast and the Furious movies are the greatest octology of all time, though. That's definitely true. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that. How many diehards have there been? Five. Five. Uh, yeah. Four brilliant ones, and then one in Russia, which was not very brilliant. No. Is that it's the one with Jai Courtney in it? Yes. He he is in this movie called Divergent, and it's the worst movie ever, and he looks like Macklemore in it, and I was so angry the whole way through the movie. 
Like, he has that, you know, that stupid Macklemore haircut where it's like all of your hair is gone except for that stupid quiff thing that sticks up. It looks a bit like Louis van Gaal's haircut. Like a nice gym. Yeah. <laughs> like a nice... <laughs> exactly that. Yeah, that, yeah. Like when you go to the barbers, you go, I, I, should, I live, please. <laughs> and then... I live in yeah. Essex. I know exactly what that haircut is. Mm. I see it every day of my life. Um, speaking of uh, actors who were almost the guys who played certain roles in movies. Uh, instead of Matt Damon in Elysium, the, ori- the original choice was uh, Eminem. Which is mind-blowing. That could have been amazing. Yeah, I've never seen the movie, so I can't really say too much about it. Um, it's all right. I've seen the movie. It's all right. Why this is a thing that could have been great, though, is because I think Eminem is a really good actor. Like, you can't really tell so much in 8 Mile because he is playing himself, but I think... Considering how self-aware he is and how much effort goes into maintaining what kind of an image he has. Not that I'm saying it's false, but, you know, you have to have an image in, when you're in the public eye. Um, and he's done it throughout his entire career, like, better than most people ever, pretty much. I think it would have been great to see him get in an acting career, like, up and running. Because th- I think there's a lot of potential there for Eminem. I think he's a really good entertainer and... I think he would have been awesome as uh, like I would have seen the movie if he was in it as well. Um, what other acting roles has he done apart from Eight Mile? I don't think he's done any apart from tiny roles. Like he played himself in Entourage and he played himself in some Adam Sandler movie. But he's supposed to play some bounty hunter guy in a movie that was supposed to come out like two years ago. But I, it's one of those things that I don't know if it'll ever be made. So I don't know a lot about the movie itself. But um. It just would have been great to see him in a role outside of playing himself, basically. Oh, yeah. Have you seen the reason why he didn't take it? No. He apparently didn't take the role because it wasn't being filmed in Detroit. Oh, yeah, that's right, actually. Um, which sounds cunty, but then you realise that he wanted it to bring like an, an, a cash injection into the economy. Into, yeah, because he so loves being from... He's from Detroit, isn't he's he? He's from Detroit, and he's pissed yeah. off that Detroit is the most underfunded and pretty much the worst place in America. Um, yeah. Because, you know, the government hates black people, and that's pretty much why. But Yeah, um, that's true. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of noble in a way. Like, I don't know. He's yeah, um, I'm not... Like, I don't have that childlike infatuation with Eminem that I used to have, you know? Like... I don't need an outlet for anger towards my parents or anything, um, but I really do respect everything he's done, and I just I mean, think... I mean, yeah, he's obviously like one of the best rappers of all time. One yeah. of the, he's, he was just I think for most kids he was like their link to gun against the system kind of thing. It sounds yeah. weird, but like I don't no one think would expect why, kids to listen to that. Like, in I mean, like if, if you didn't, yeah. years time, he'll go down as the best rapper or the most influential rapper I mean, of most, all time. most rappers say he is the best rapper of all time mm. like mo- like current ones but yeah he, I think he already is going down as one of the best at least influential yeah because he brought rap to a whole new sort of uh, he almost made uh, it pop music didn't he well he did make it pop music essentially but... yeah because he was hitting number ones yeah. well a lot of people like LL Cool J did that before him made it pop music yeah, L- LL Cool J was like the the first guy who wrote a rap song that was like a love song. Right. Yeah. Cause yeah. I suppose other, other than uh, hidden yeah. people. Yeah. But um. Yeah. yeah I I don't know. I I I don't think he's the best rapper of all time. But I am a huge fan, and I do like everything about him. I I think he has this way of perpetuating this image about himself that makes it fairly undisputable to say he's the greatest. And he's really, really well respected by everybody. Like, I think he's an amazing lyricist and everything. He, he, he never claimed. I don't think he ever claims to be the greatest. He just he wants to go down as one of the greatest. I'm beginning to feel like a rap god. <laughs> Ringing yeah, any he bells? Just, he just schooled you there, Jack. I find it really logic funny thing again. <laughs> like he's bringing logic to the table again. You bastard! I oh, know. Yeah. Why does he insist on doing it? I That's find it funny the way uh, Eminem has a song called "We Made You," in which. Uh, you know, it's not him who explicitly says it, but in the chorus it says, you're a rock star, everybody wants you. And then he's also got a song called Rap God where he refers to himself as a rap god. But when Kanye West calls himself um, a, like a rock star, everyone goes crazy. Oh, you're not a rock star. Like he says he's Already a god. Calls him, I'm a creative genius. Yeah. Like, but Eminem's allowed to do all of those things. Like Eminem refers to Because Eminem, Eminem hasn't got this reputation, this egotistical thing. Like, most of his career he's only sort of recently developed it 
he should though. Like rap is about being that, you know. Like it's, yeah, it's yeah, you can't be an understated sort of shy rapper. I don't think. Yeah. You have to be. You can be shy as 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 yourself, but I don't think you can be as the persona. You don't get you many. You don't get many rappers. You don't get many rappers around who claim themselves to be. I'm um, probably about the twenty seventh best around at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> but no one the best of all time. Yeah, I'm average. Yeah. 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 Don't buy my CDs. Buy his. Yeah, he's much better. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Macklemore. <laughs> uh, speaking of rap, um, one of the greatest producers i think of all time uh is due to have an album out any day now called detox <laughs> this is uh dr dre's album that was sub- like i remember back in 2006 listening to the documentary by the game and even encore by eminem i think in 2005 and there was all these references to detox in it and i was like i was a kid and i had dre's 2001 album and i was like what the fuck is detox and we didn't really have well we had the internet but it wasn't very good so I went on dial-up, and 45 minutes later, when the Google page for Detox loaded, um, I found out where my local Detox center was. Now, I, um, I I looked it up and everything, and I was like, oh, Detox, new Dre album, that's so exciting. And then nothing happened. And then, like, in the year 2011 or something, we got the first single off it, which was I Need a Doctor, which had Eminem and Skylar Grey in it. And then nothing happened again, and now it just, Dre is a billionaire, and it's probably never going to happen, and I think that's kind of a shame, because it could have been amazing. There's a lot of things that might have happened, but do you think he would ever do detox for the money? Who is jingling keys? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> would he ever do detox for the money, though? No, of course not. I don't not. get money as the issue, but now he's, obviously he hasn't do Dre beats anymore, does he? No. He's still somewhat involved, I think, but yeah. there's a lot of things where it could end up being, well, I've got all this time now. I don't know, like... Yeah. He, he, like, I, I don't know a lot about rap in the 90s. I mean, I only know what I hear now, but I don't know what it was like back then. But the story goes that Dre brought back the sound of the West Coast in 1994. Um, or was it? No, it was 92. Whatever year it was um, when The Chronic came out. And that was a great album. And, like, I listen to it now. It's still a great album. And then 2001 came out in 99, which is such a confusing thing. And that's an album that gave us songs like Still Dre and Forgot About Dre and they're fucking amazing. Imagine what he could do nowadays, like especially considering the advancements in technology for beat making and stuff. And he is one of the yeah. best producers. Like, I mean, but that's the thing, though, with it, the whole like advanced technology. It's so much less creative, I don't think. Did when that, was his that, last album? It's so less creative, I don't think. It's no, it's no near as creative, I don't think, because it's just... Really? Have you ever listened to uh, Kanye West's Don't fantasy album? Don't fucking use logic. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make sweeping statements once, that you can't once, back up. For once, arguably. I think we should just... One, once when Jack makes a sweeping statement, we should just back him to the hill and just say, no, you're <laughs> right, Jack. <laughs> and then I'll persist with it for my whole life. Just because two people <laughs> once agreed with me. Yeah, but... um. No, like, it, there's plenty, like, it, the advancement of technology doesn't take away people's creativity, and I think Kanye West is a good example of that. Like, you listen to Yeezus and Dark Fantasy, well, I... I great just in a different way. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Like, that's, that's, you know, that's moving with the times. That's what great producers do, is they move with the times. You know, like, you have to improve or, or get to fuck, really. Um, not a lot of people bring back old-school hip-hop. I guess Nas did it with Life is Good, but... It's not something you see a lot of, and I think Dre... Like, if, if you listen to uh, I Need a Doctor, Dre didn't actually produce that beat, Alex the Kid did, but that's an example of what you can do with a drum-heavy beat on a hip-hop track nowadays. Yeah, that's all drums, though, yeah, isn't it? It's fucking brilliant, though. It's so yeah. good. I remember that song coming out. I just uh, googled uh, Detox, and the first news story that came up was the fact that it's not going to be called Detox. <laughs> For fuck's sake. <laughs> Apparently, uh... Relapse Dre too. scrapped mm. the title two years ago and came up with a new one, but he's not going to tell anyone about it. Because it's not coming out. Because it's never coming out, yeah, basically. That's but, what I'm yeah. assuming, yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, like, that album could have been great, you know, but we'll never, ever hear anything from it. Even though supposedly a lot of tracks were already made, and then he remade them again, which is like... Do you actually want to even hear it now? Because I remember the fucking hype surrounding Chinese Democracy, the Guns N' Roses album, and that was garbage when that came out. So yeah, the hype kills everything. Anything hyped has to be amazing, because otherwise it will just go down as a massive disappointment. That's so which true. Detox would, because how many people have been waiting for this for so long now? Yeah, but... because anticipation levels grow and grow and grow, 
And Although I guess the anticipation for detox has probably died by now. Well, That's, somewhat. Uh, it's he's not as high. Better as... off ignoring everything, just not even talking about it, and going another ten years and then releasing it. Yeah, I think changing the name in that regard was probably a good idea from him. Yeah. I mean, how old? How old is he now? <clears throat> uh, he's like forty-eight, I think. Yeah, I don't think he'd be releasing albums at fifty-eight. Yeah, but he's a rapper. When what difference does it make? He's what he's got to say at fifty-eight compared to forty-eight. Well, I think all all the all the weed in his lungs will make him like unable to rap. Yeah, but he's a licensed medical practitioner. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose on the conversation of producers, you can go on to Jerry Fink, can you? And yeah, you could. What a guy. That yeah, that's the whole thing. That's the one thing I brought to this. Uh, yeah. Blink One Eight Two's next album after their self-titled effort. Yeah. And how amazing that would have been. Yeah. Um, their not, self-titled... Not now, it's one of my favourite songs of all time. Yeah, and that was the track that was supposed to be the Which single. Basically, the... when the, yeah, it was their single for the next... Well, for their next album, until he died. So let's backtrack for a second. Because I don't know too much about this, so do you explain it and I'll... Um... Well, Link's they're... self-titled album came out in 2005? Uh, yes. And it was, yeah. like critically acclaimed i think it has a meta score of 73 which for a pop punk album is ridiculously good yeah like it's not mainstream well it's not his mainstream i suppose but i genuinely think it's timeless and i don't know how silly that sounds because i'm someone who's supposed to know stuff about music but i think it's a fucking brilliant album it's proper cohesive i'll I'll, I'll never ever lose interest in that that album yeah it's experimental enough to not have stuck with any time like it's brilliant um, and the production on it was brilliant, and they... It was, it was Jerry Finn was a producer. Yeah, Jerry Finn produced it, and I think Travis Barker had a pretty big input on that yeah. too. Creatively, I think he did, yeah. Yeah, that's right, and they, they just, they did so well with that album, and then they toured relentlessly, and they, a couple of years later, they had a track called Not Now, which was going to be the single to their next album after that, but it never happened, because the band broke up. <laughs> what, they broke up after... That releasing that in two thousand and whatever it was two thousand five yeah I think they broke up around oh six or oh seven uh, off the um, back end of their tour. <clears throat> yeah and so what the albums they released since then then uh, neighborhoods came out in two thousand eleven right and an EP called dogs eating dogs yeah neighborhoods is very good but neighborhoods has aged well I think neighborhoods is their second best album in all honesty um I like Enemy of the State. Yeah, so do I, but I kind of feel like that album is going to be locked in... It, it's going to be put in the vault and locked in the year 1999. Not Now came out 2005, ended 2005. Oh, really? Yeah. And it was... They broke up, like, soon after. Yeah. I think it actually came out after they broke up. Yeah, it did. I think the studio released it, but it was supposed to be the leading single off their next album coming up after. Yeah. But they never got to finish those songs, obviously, and then they took a break for what four years or something. I mean, if you've I've watched like the making of a Blink One Eight Two album, I probably you've probably watched it as well. Yeah, I've watched and it several got, times. Like, you can, yeah, they've got like they they try the creative stuff that goes on while they're sitting around, and some of the songs they like they're sort of playing on guitars and that are actually in neighborhoods. So they've kept the same songs, but I just think they went in a complete different direction in neighborhoods compared yeah, to where they yeah, was yeah. going. Um, it's very good was, though. That was more a pressure from the uh, studio, I guess. So. Yeah, I really like the. Um, I really like the sort of that sonically, like the what would you call it? It's like electronic sound. Yeah, yeah. Which I suppose, yeah. It suits them really very well. Bit. I think anything that allows Tom's voice a lot more freedom is pretty important with their albums because he can't sing at all. You did notice <laughs> notice on neighborhoods like his. His studio voice on that is more similar to his live voice. Yeah. Because, yeah, he sings almost like he'd sing live, but not quite as bad. Well, you, he, you can, he still enunciates, you know? He's still got something that resembles diction and, and his actual tones and yeah. everything. But when he sings live, he's just a baby killing a cat in a Californian voice. <laughs> yeah. Don't you think you have to be that as a rock singer, though? You have to sound like the studio album, because otherwise, when people go see you live... It's not like a, because a, a rock performance it's isn't very, like a pop performance, is it? You can't dress up in silly outfits and dance and stuff. It's very rare to find a performance that sings live as they sing in the studio on the album. Yeah, like it sounds weird, but I just think Codeline are pretty good at that. 
Yeah, Steve's, like Steve's voice is very similar live as he was on the album. He's he's just a really fucking good singer naturally, though. I I think yeah. I don't know a lot about what makes a singer's voice decline, um, but I know that if you looked at say an Oasis, if you look at Oasis at Nebworth in '96, um, like Liam's voice is on form. Like he was never a good singer. He's kind of good at snarling or whatever, but his voice is fucking. His voice is as it should be. Yeah. Yeah, but you listen to him now, and he just sounds like like he's dying on stage like he doesn't sing he he actually lets the crowd sing a lot of the notes because all he can really do is go Nyah! yeah um who's gonna talk um the bloke from snow patrol is it gary lightbody the light lead singer he doesn't see it he doesn't drink or smoke does he and he doesn't talk for like a day before like recording and stuff like that just to protect his voice and stuff like that he's really living the rock and roll lifestyle he yeah, doesn't sing though i don't like as as like obviously like let's go down this road right because i'm friends with the guy in code line people who hate code line come to me or, or else i read reviews about them or whatever and they're like yeah code line are following the snow patrol blueprint and it's like there is no snow patrol song that sounds like a code line song like the highest gary lightbody can go with his voice is in run when he's like you know that light up light up like he can't he doesn't Snow, he has no high notes like he's, he's not a singer he talks but sings it in a way he, yeah. he sings himself talking he sings himself talking i don't know he's a brilliant talking, songwriter just, yeah and he's got a good voice but it's not a singing voice it's uh, a yeah it's yeah it's not like you know he's not in the same league as steve and i don't care how that sounds like i've seen snow patrol live as well and they're brilliant like they don't do slow songs live really you know they they do them more as interludes than anything else like they they do a great set and they do a great show live and i like their production i think gary lightbody's a great songwriter but they don't have any songs where he sings high so i don't get where comparisons with them come from that's most (laughs) rock singers though isn't it most of them are better songwriters than they are singers Mm. Tom, Tom DeLong is an amazing songwriter. I think he's a great songwriter. Thing. What's that? I think he's a great songwriter. I think uh, yeah. Asthenia off the self-titled album is fucking brilliant. Like I it, think he was mostly involved in the songwriting on the album, wasn't he? Yeah, it's a lot of them are like, you know, it's either Tom DeLong or it's DeLong Hoppus, but it's always DeLong. Like he he was. The yeah. Man. I mean, I miss you was both of them, if I remember. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I think I remember. I remember Sandy the week that day went into different rooms and both wrote like a verse and then came together with it and just played it. Yeah, when when they were recording Take Off Your Pants and Jacket, the the studio, the label were like, there's not enough singles on the album. So Mark and Tom both went into separate rooms and Tom came out with First Date and Mark came out with The Rock Show. Yeah. Two massive singles off that album. Like I think the Beatles famously did that on, on uh, was it Abbey Road? They each basically wrote their own stuff because uh, they, at this point, I don't think they'd um, they were getting along. Let's say. Yeah, Abbey Road um, was one of their last, wasn't it? And yeah, and uh, basically they all wrote individual songs, which is why the album's kind of a mess. But it's, it's, it's great. Yeah, 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 it's great. Yeah. It's interesting that way. There's such a division on the songs, but from after what's this? What's Sun King? Is that track ten? Yeah, they're all sort of a the side what what used to be called side two. Yeah. yeah, they're all just one long amazing song that changes in these really intricate ways. Like yeah, uh, it's a really great sort of medley of songs. Yeah, this this may be a controversial statement, um, and I don't know how this will go down, but the Beatles were pretty good at music. I think that is controversial, isn't best it? All, best band of all time. Yeah, I, really, Jack. I, I, sure? don't think, I don't think there can be any any animosity there. What about Macklemore? Yeah, what about Macklemore? He's 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 on his own though. He's not banned. If he was <laughs> right, you've got us there. He's a people. solo artist. Yeah, what about Macklemore multiple... and Ryan Lewis? Oh, yeah, there's two of them. He's a he's a duo. I don't know who Ryan Lewis is. He's his like, probably better that way. Buddy. Should we move on? People hate when we talk about music anyway. So yeah, I mean, my idea's gone now. So. I'll let you two just chat for the rest. Yeah, your me. idea. Don't, don't, don't claim that. I said it the cool. other day. Did I not say it the other day though? What? I said to Will the other day. They've been on like two of them. Sure you did. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lewis Moore is going to introduce the next topic. Um, I'm going to go with uh, Russell Crowe. 
<laughs> always sake. a always a big favourite on the podcast. <laughs> always goes down well. Yeah. It was apparently going to be a Gladiator 2, which just uh, uh, off the bat is amazing. Uh, and <laughs> it was going to be directed by Nick Cave of Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. Yeah. Back to music again. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, and he was, the script, which was um, mental, uh, as it would be, because it's Nick Cave, uh, had Russell Crowe as Maximus uh, come back through time. <laughs> he was like he regenerated somehow and uh he was tasked to kill Jesus because the gods didn't <laughs> like the gods didn't like Jesus' popularity. Like he was the Justin Bieber of his time or something. And um yeah. I like the was... idea that in the film, if it did happen, they wouldn't even give him some kind of explanation of why he was there. He'd just appear there. <laughs> yeah. There'd be there'd be no whatsoever, nothing yeah. whatsoever saying this is what happened. Yeah. He yeah, they basically died at the end of Gladiator, but they brought him back. The gods have brought him back to kill Jesus, and then after he kills Jesus, apparently according to the script, he would go back and fight in every major conflict, uh, to sort of change the course of history, uh, which sounds amazing. Um, Help but England never happened. World War Two again. <laughs> yeah, <Come on. laughs> I'm trying to wind up L here. He wouldn't even help England invade Ireland. <laughs> If that was if that did happen, I'd come straight to your house. <laughs> Why to defend me? <laughs> no, the wrap a baseball bat around your head. Yeah, I don't think that would happen. <laughs> um, but yeah, that that you know that's a true story as well. Like yeah, that's all true. I have not made that up. That's, yeah, that's all true. That like I it's heard. It's scary that that's true. <laughs> it's it's Nick Cave though, isn't it? He, he's just yeah. a lunatic. But like what? <laughs> The original plans for the Gladiator movie were for them to give Maximus the commercial support that he actually had in real life at the time. Like, he was a superstar at the time. Um, There were advertising billboards in Rome with his face on it and stuff. And that's genuinely not a lie. And that was supposed to be in the original Gladiator script. But they just thought, like, no one's going to believe that this really happened. So we're not going to go that way. But instead, they opted to consider a sequel where he, like, he doesn't even echo in Eternity anymore. He exists in Eternity, and he fucks Eternity up and yeah. changes the course. The of problem it. is, with that sort of thing, is basically a crazy guy wrote some words down. That's all <laughs> that story is. Because it's not, it didn't get greenlit, it didn't happen, it's just a guy wrote some words down on a bit of paper that didn't make any sense. It sounds like one of those uh, things he writes in his phone again when he's drunk <laughs> and then reads back on it. You said it on your notes, didn't you? Yeah. About how to have a good life or something. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was it? It was just one word, wasn't it? I can't remember. Or it was just one, make your bed. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was there. I don't know. Uh, do, you wanna, do you want me to read? No, I can't, actually. Cause I'd love you to. There's too many ideas for a great book. I'm looking at my memos right now. <laughs> and uh <laughs> I have I have this <laughs> oh, I have this one it. dream that I wrote down once, right? Where um remember when Kim Kardashian and Kanye West got married and they were honeymooning in Ireland? Yeah. I had a dream that I was down at my cousin's house and uh I saw Kim Kardashian cheating on Kanye in some in some sleazy motel in Ireland. <laughs> And uh, Kanye went mental and hung himself in the dream. And I was distraught because I was the one who found him for some reason. And <laughs> what so I you, ha- spotted, you spotted Kim cheating on him and then you found him. It sounds, yeah. like, it sounds like Forrest Gump being involved in everything. What I've written next is just five words that I, I use as a like a memory trick to remind myself of what the rest of the dream was. And Remember it says you saw Kanye dead. Crazy rural Ireland atmosphere vibe. <laughs> 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 so that's what goes on in my head. But uh like, that start the screenplay or something, didn't it? It sounds like Nick Cave is writing the sequel to Gladiator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah that that is uh that that's crazy and that's also true and that scares me a little bit, to be honest. Yeah. Um, should we move on? 
Yeah, yeah my well, is, Russell Crowe. We should never move on from Russell Crowe. Yeah, let's continue talking about Russell Crowe. Did you know that he's got a beat, fam? <laughs> I heard. Did you know that Maximus Meridius, translated in English, means huge penis? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm sure we said that before. Our discussion on things that could have been great will continue after the very first edition of Dear Jack. <sighs> after a word from our sponsor. No. Pop tarts. <laughs> <laughs> a woman is dead. That doesn't sound like that's a sponsor. That's a horrific. That's how that is, Jack. This is where you come in and take banter. <laughs> Dear Jack, my alphabet soup is constantly giving me numbers instead of letters. Please help. Right. You gotta get the can. Does it come in a can or is it a tin? Don't know. Doesn't matter. It's not a can, it's a tin, yeah. Go into your kitchen, empty it onto the top, all of it. Just go through one by one, taking all the numbers out. And then scoop all the back into the pan and cook them. Bang. Problem solved. Next question. <laughs> Help, I'm stuck in a tree. Well, when was this question asked? <laughs> 11 days ago. <laughs> okay, good. So you're probably waiting for the answer still. Yeah, he's still time. up there. 11 yeah. days. Yeah, you yeah, know, he's probably alive. Okay, festering corpse. Here's how we're yes. going to go about. Shout at the top of your voice. Which I'm sure you've already tried. It's been eleven well, days. To be fair, he's managed to get a Wi-Fi signal from the top of the tree and send us a question. I, I, I mean, think he he's... might be. If he's got a phone like mine, he's definitely out of battery by now. Oh yeah, good point. Um, just jump. See what yeah. happens. All right, yep, next. Solved. <laughs> the final Thanks, piece yeah. of the puzzle. How would I go about joining the police force? This is a legitimate question. Were of you? Which Word. I believe means love. How would you join the police force? Ideally, search for someone you know, or someone like a family friend who is in it. I thought he was going to like search for like John McClane or something. <laughs> <laughs> search for someone you know, take Who's their the hard drive force? and bring it to the police force, because there's definitely incriminating stuff on there. Um, <laughs> no, just I think if, you, if there's someone you know who is in the police force, ask them about it, because they'll be the ones that give you the best advice. If not, Go to your They'd local police you, station. Jack. Ask them. <laughs> Jack's advice is ask Let's go someone to else. Someone else. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, if there is someone you know who does it, ask them. If not, go to a police station. Yeah, voluntarily, don't commit a crime to just to go, go there. Go to the police station. Yeah, go to the police station. Say, I want to be a pig. Don't say that. You'll probably get arrested. Um, <laughs> they probably won't let you in the police force after that. I suppose is there, but... Well, I'd, I'd say go to a police station. Take yell, donuts. Make me one of you and then leave. Uh, or, or take a leaflet or something, like a pamphlet. They have pamphlets at a police station, don't they? Probably. Don't do drugs. Uh, don't kill people. Yeah. Something. Yeah. <laughs> a whole pamphlet that says don't kill people. Yeah, nice. That was the first edition of Dear Jack. If you have a question to submit to Dear Jack, check the Ask FM link in the description and submit your question anonymously. You don't even have to create an account. I can't stop talking in this voice. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is, uh... That right... was so seamless, that was. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> right now, it's the 18th of September. We're recording this the night before it goes live. So, presumably, that barbagging behemoth billionaire company have sorted their fucking life out and put the web app up. But if not, then I'm not even going to be surprised uh, the the web app has not been released. And how this relates to uh, to what we're talking about is that I have this theory that EA are widely, well, EA Sports, we'll say, are widely regarded as being one of the most incompetent and just tactless companies when it comes to dealing with customer relations. And I think that this is a result of them having literally no competition. They don't have to get their act together. They don't need to. People are still going to buy their game year after year. So my all that could have been part of this is uh, what if Pro Evolution Soccer didn't get consistently and systematically worse piece by piece after the fifth one, which was the best football game of all time? Has five, yeah. I mean, this, yeah. PA Sports are just terrible. But it's that kind of thing where people keep going back to them. It's a very weird analogy I'm about to make. Girls like bad boys. And it's the same with boys in games. 
so they'll keep going back. That doesn't make sense. I That's know. the worst analogy I've ever heard in my entire life. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> it, we don't go back to them because they're bad. No, you, you go... Well, we go back to it because you're... they're the only company that's producing anything that resembles a quality football game. At yeah, the, the fact is, we all like football a lot. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not I want to sure. be able to play it substantially over a year. <laughs> Can we just talk about how shit that metaphor was? <laughs> I love when Jack comes out with a great sort of. He thinks in his mind, this is going to be. I know. <laughs> Don't talk to me. <laughs> Oh my uh, god. Never Pro Evo 5 was the one with uh, Thierry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Terry and Terry. A... If you Terry and Terry. Terry and North Terry, London yeah. Red. North yeah. London White. Yeah. Oh, I love that game. It was it was just an amazing game. Everything worked perfectly. Yeah, it was like, not like, you know, people will say, oh yeah, but there was no sponsorship deals. Like, whatever if that if that matters to you then it's not the best football game ever but in terms of the actual game engine and the gameplay it was unrivaled there was nothing like it before that and i'd say in terms of the context of its time and how good it was and how well it utilized technology available at its time there hasn't been anything as good since um no, like there have been better games but not in the same context there's been better games but there's been better games that still haven't reached the potential of the platform they're putting it on yeah exactly that makes sense which as five did yeah that was um, one of the best games on ps2 you know absolutely was it ps2 yeah it was yeah it was ps2 yeah yeah yeah, yeah it was so good though yeah um and like just imagine if they'd built on that and gotten better like because what they did was they took away all the features along the way like i remember i think the one after that they wouldn't let you bring your goalkeeper up for a corner anymore if you were losing and then after that they took away other things and they just kept on making it worse and worse and worse and eventually what you were left with was this piece of shit shell of a game that still had the same boxes uh, for logos as it had in the fucking first ever version on the ps1 yeah and you just like fair enough the champions league was fully licensed and that is a huge thing for a company like that but i don't know why they're spending the money on that when i don't know how big the market share for pro evolution soccer versus fifa is it's probably something i should have researched before but i would imagine fifa are eating up a good 65 percent of it at the moment if not more 65 percent seems very very conservative yeah i was being conservative because i didn't want to say what i really think and have someone say oh my god it's nowhere near that you idiot ah were you guys always like Pro Evo and then you changed to FIFA? What was your like I was, uh, history of I was FIFA until PES four and five. Then I got yeah, PES same, six. Same. Then... Uh, I'd say PES. I was I got PES three, four, and five. But before that, I, like I remember FIFA ninety nine. I think maybe. up to two thousand and two, I was FIFA. What was there? Was there one with like Edgar Davids on the front? Was that two thousand and three? Yep. No, I, I think that was two thousand. Yeah, two thousand and three. It was yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I definitely got that FIFA game. Uh, yeah. Um, 2003, yeah. I, ha- I I was never interested in football until around the year 2000. Um, 2001 was the first time I really cared about football. Um, but, like, I always watched it passively. Um, but I used to um, go to my friend's house, like, every day when I was, like, eight or nine. And he had FIFA 98, and I used to play that. And then 99... Uh, 2000, all the way up to Pro Evolution Soccer 2. I bought along with the FIFA game from that year, which I think was 2002. Yeah, I think I did that briefly as well. Got both of them. Yeah. I think it was Paul Skulls on the front. Was In it? 98 was, I think. What a right. mundane person to have on the front cover. I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like putting someone like, I don't know. It's like nowadays. Chris Martin being on the face of the Phil music Jagielka industry. Jagielka on the news. <laughs> um, or James Milner. Yeah, that'd be amazing actually but like that was the i always played fifa i always had fifa up until uh, two, fifa 2005 was the last one i ever bought and then i bought pro evolution soccer for, not the last one i've ever bought obviously that's not true um but it was the last <laughs> one i ever bought before and then i moved to pez and i got all of them all the way up to i gave them till the year 2009 to sort themselves out like i'm a nice guy um but they didn't do it at all and you know, I had to go back to FIFA then because I'm only human, you know? Yeah, I think I mean, FIFA, FIFA FIFA 10 was the first one. Was it a Tevez on the front, maybe? I can't Possibly. remember. But I went FIFA back to FIFA. Has FIFA, 10. FIFA has progressed year on year. 
but there's always yeah. a big, big issue with it. Whereas Prover has regressed every year. Yeah. But still has the big issues on it in its own right. I They're think the problem is FIFA started from a very bad position, whereas Pez are always trying to hark back to the glory days, aren't they? Rather than sort of... Um, I mean, it's hard to talk about without sounding like a... You know. But, yeah, they they sort of hit the jackpot really early. Basically, Pro Evo likes bad boys. Yeah, I mean, you know... Fuck off. <laughs> Uh, sometimes I, I sit in conversation with you and I just wonder why I'm here because I don't know sometimes you say like really profound things sometimes I do don't I yeah the problem is there's there's a very thin line between the, the profound things you say and some the, uh, garbage that comes out of your mouth there's a thin line who said there's a thin line between genius and being an idiot <laughs> you just now <laughs> <laughs> Did one I? Those profound I things to... I've <laughs> said that before. I imagine, like, out of our group, like, generally people looking in probably wouldn't have thought Jack would be first choice for the podcast. But this is why he is, is because he says fucking great things and you all love it. And he gives <laughs> great advice. I do give great advice. <laughs> like, pouring a tin of Alphagetti spaghetti onto your thing, onto your kitchen. You, I mean, can't, you can't go wrong with that. You can't. Um, I have another music-related one that uh, we might as well talk about. Um, this is like the Stone Roses splitting up in 1996 and never making another album since then. Um, like They did get back together and tour, and I was lucky enough to see them two years ago, which is one of the greatest experiences of my life. But I wonder what it would have been like if they kept making music, because their debut album is like widely renowned as being one of the greatest debut albums of all time. And their second album was all right. <laughs> their, their second album was not as good as that. But um, they were like a really interesting band that had a really uh, hardcore, diehard sort of fan base. And they were responsible for like a huge shakeup in the way that music was made and, and the way that labels looked after bands as well. Um, but yeah, like imagine if they made another album. That would have been sweet back in the day. They released the. What self-titled album? It was called The Stone Roses, wasn't it? Wasn't yep. It? Yep. Yeah. Uh, when was that? 90? I think I think it was nineteen ninety. Right. Because that was that's fucking ages ago. It could be ninety two. Like what? Like I know that there were tracks from it released off their eighty nine like EP. So I don't know specifically what year it was. It could have been ninety one. It was any time between. It's so annoying. I'm looking at a Stone Roses poster in my room in front of me and I don't notice. And I have their book War and Peace or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I can't remember what or what year it was that it was released. But it so how many was... years were they actually active? Um, they were active from the late eighty or the mid eighties, really. Um, but only as a young band, you know, as a signed band, they were active for about six years, I think. Right, which I suppose is sort of an average sort of length, isn't it? I mean, yeah, you know, but it only was two albums. Yeah, because what they just toured massively the first one, presumably. I think so. They were um, about to sign like a five-year deal with Geffen Records and John Squire left the band and uh, the the label head came to Ian Brown or their manager or someone and said, we're going to give you um, fucking uh, Slash to replace Squire on your live shows. And Ian Brown was like, no, I'm not taking him because Guns N' Roses are the worst band in the world. (laughs) And like, that's part of what makes them so cool is that they had this really, really weird and spiteful code of ethics that they lived by and never broke and everything. And it's just like, uh, they're just a phenomenal band that have this amazing mythology. If you read about them, you'll be captivated by it, whether or not you even like the music, I think. Yeah, they come out of... Uh, they're from Manchester, aren't they? They are, yeah. Yeah, that whole sort of... Um... I mean, what was that scene called? That was a scene. Manchester. Yeah. Why? I mean, did they release a bunch of songs uh, between the two albums or not? Just There was just two albums. Um, I think they might have released Fool's Gold after the first album because that was never on an album. That's like one of the biggest songs, isn't it? It is, yeah. A lot of their biggest songs are non-album tracks, like Sally Cinnamon as well is a non-album track. But um, the second album had 
love spreads on it which is a pretty big track and like a lot of other like they're they're just i don't know they're just a phenomenal band really listen to them right now everybody <laughs> what were you don't, gonna say don't, don't don't get i can't remember uh. <laughs> the brain was there and then it went <laughs> <sighs> so uh lewis more you've got one more thing don't you i do yeah um it's another movie related um thing that could have been uh nick cage as superman oh, i forgot all about this so did i yeah nick what cage hero. after the success of um batman Con Air. after the success of con obviously con Air, <laughs> all time. uh no nah, after the success of uh batman um uh warner brothers wanted tim burton to direct a uh a superman movie can Could you imagine how obviously... shit that would have been it would have been. It would have been. I mean, because he sort of nailed the first two couple of Batman movies with the dark, sort of gritty, which is kind of Tim Burton's style, isn't it? That's literally um, but, all he does. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but Superman isn't dark and gritty. Superman is sort of big blue Boy Scout. Sort of, he does no wrong. He's colourful. He's the most you know. boring cunt in the history of superheroes. Yeah. Exactly. But then you directed by Tim Burton and Nick Cage as Superman, and it suddenly turns into some sort of weird. Uh, sort of, you know, and obviously crazy. Johnny Depp would play the villain because let's Johnny, face it, Johnny Depp would play Lex Luthor. Yeah, he'd be some uh, kind of character actor in it. Definitely. And it would sound, it sounds like a weird trip that somebody had, doesn't it? Like Nick Cage as Superman, it just doesn't make any sense. No, it does not. Like it, I don't know. I, I the one thing I'm taking away from this is that I really hate that someone decided that it would be a good idea for Tim Burton to fucking direct Superman. Like, because. All, like, I don't know how controversial this is to say, because I've always taught it, and I've never really seen anyone actively speak out and agree with me on this point, but I fucking hate Tim Burton and all of his movies, and I've seen, like, all of them, and they're all the exact same movie, and they all have the exact same character played by the exact same guy in Johnny Depp, like, fucking Sleepy Todd and Sweeney Hollow. Like, that's not... I've just mixed those up on purpose because that's how fucking... They're just all well, before, the same. Before he found Johnny Depp, but he had uh, Michael Keaton, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, Michael Keaton was Batman. And um, Edward Scissorhands. No, not Edward Scissorhands. He was... Um... No, because Johnny Depp was Edward Scissorhands. Yeah, sorry. What do I mean? I mean... Um... Uh, say his Call name three times in a original. mirror. What? Candyman? No. And he appears... What the fuck is his name? That was Candyman. Yeah, but it's not him. It's not the Candyman. Oh, it's... it's the fucking Nightmare on Elm Street. No. No, that was Johnny nope. Depp too, though. Yeah, I'm just going to have to Google Tim Burton. Um, but yeah, that's just... Um... Did he, uh, he direct... Did you... Sorry, you go. I was going to say, didn't he direct Charlie and the Chocolate Factory as well? Was that him? Yeah. Fucking Johnny hell. Depp. That's just annoyed me so much, because Johnny Depp just plays Johnny Depp in that movie, and... Oh, it's Beetle so Juice. fucking pointless. Beetlejuice is the fucking film I forgot the name of. Oh, Beetle yeah, Beetlejuice, Juice. yeah. Yeah. Did you not like the two first two Batman movies? Uh, you know, I liked them at the time, but they would be unwatchable for me now. I don't know. I have watched them recently, and I, I still quite enjoy them. Like, I want to say this. At the time, I liked Batman and Robin and Batman Forever and I liked all of those. I liked the, what's the I liked the Mister Freeze one, and I liked the one with uh, that's Batman and Robin. Yeah, well, I liked that at the time. I saw that in the cinema, and I thought that was a good movie. So that tells you how much little Elden Nero knew about cinematography. I would say the first Batman, uh, Tim Burton's Batman, is is okay because Jack Nicholson is so good in it. I'd say it's acceptable, yeah. But Batman and Robin now is unwatchable. It's after you've seen The Dark Knight and. Uh, uh, all those Tim, Bur- uh, not Tim Burton, um, Christopher Nolan, Chris Nolan movies, yeah, Batman and Robin is completely unwatchable. It's awful. It's um, it's been like it's obsolete now, like yeah. that whole thing. But I, I, I just don't know. I just have this real anti Tim Burton. I just hate Tim. It's a, I've got an irrational hatred for Tim Burton and Johnny Depp. I think. Um, I don't mind Johnny Depp. I'm gonna send you a link in the Skype chat. To all of his movies. People watching the podcast, if you just talk to yourselves while they just do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I don't know. Um, imagining Nicolas Cage as Superman is kind of terrifying, isn't it? I think it, I mean, could be, it could have been great. No? Do you really think that, though? 
But because I, I like I know I like Nick Cage. Like he does some really shitty movies, but he could have been great. Like, but like if he what? applies himself, he could be the world's greatest actor. He just <laughs> sometimes takes things for the cash. What could you do with Superman that would actually make him an accessible, relatable? That's what I'm saying. Like he he's crazy enough and weird enough to make that an interesting. I mean, I kind of like Superman anyway, but he's kind of crazy enough to make that character a lot more interesting, you know? The only thing that brings you any sort of sympathy for Superman is the fact that his parents are dead or that he doesn't know really who his family is because he's an alien and he's obviously got that whole isolation and longing to return to his home planet. And that's, like, yeah, I get that. That's that's probably difficult enough to deal with. But, like, mate, you can fly through space and you're bulletproof and you can see through walls and your eyes can melt things and... You're just a cunt. Like, fuck off. Like, I just don't get why he's so ridiculously popular. Like, what is it about him that made him as big as he is? He just seems like the laziest invention of a superhero. It's because he was the first superhero. Yeah, but even then... He wasn't, though. Batman was made before him. Nah, Superman was made first. Superman was first. Really? Was Superman not made in the 50s? Nope. He was made in, like, 1930-something. By two Russians, isn't that right? Uh, got to... well, I don't know the history. I think it was. Uh, t- I I always thought that uh, Batman was first, but yeah, I don't know. I guess yeah, he's the first one, and he's fucking got all the powers of every single one of them combined. But then, if you're gonna be the first one, you're gonna have all the powers, aren't you? Because there's no there's no other uh, to compare to. You, you think know? they would have built it up or something, though, wouldn't you? Like, where's the, where's like... the mystery? Where's the adventure? It's just. Like the fir- like the first ep- like the first issue of the comics, he he only had one power, and that was like seeing through walls. Yeah, and then he levels up. Like he then kills he a certain up. amount of bad guys and levels yeah. up to the next level. Yeah, yeah, nice. Like he even has enough coins, and he can get. Enough yeah, exactly. Coins. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, and if you want coins, by the way, check it out. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> the the villains in the Superman franchise aren't interesting to me either. Like none of them really do anything, you know. Yeah, that's that's true. I there's um. There's not enough. Apart from Lex Luthor, a lot of people can't name a Superman villain, really. And Lex Luthor isn't even the best guy named Lex. Because, like, Lex Luger was, like... Lex Luger's clearly the, the best, champion, best yeah. Lex, yeah. Uh, Superman is DC, isn't that right? Yeah. And Batman is DC. Yeah. Um, who is another DC superhero who isn't awful? Uh, you've what, got... What were the watch- name other, other DC superheroes? Uh, there's Wonder Woman, The Flash... Green Lantern. What were the Watchmen? That was DC, yeah. Watchmen is a good movie. That is a great movie, yeah. It's uh, a... underrated. It is underrated, yeah. I watched Very that long. cinema and it blew my mind. Yeah, I, I fucking loved it. The soundtrack to it is brilliant as well. I think that helps a lot. Yeah, I agree. But, a good uh, soundtrack makes a movie. Yeah, definitely. Have you seen, actually, the other day, um, AV Club, I think it was, or Stereogram, or someone tweeted a picture of, um, or a video of the final scene in Star Wars A New Hope, just to bring this full circle, we'll end with Star Wars, um, that scene where they do the metal presentation, but there's no music in it. Right. And it's like, they've dubbed over the audio, so like, when it shows Luke laughing, like, some guy laughs, and it sounds like it's Luke or whatever, but when yeah. Chewbacca, like, there's no music, and they're walking right. through this silent um, ceremony, like, in this massive chapel-like thing, and Chewbacca just goes, ah! <laughs> it's so fucking It probably is really, really weird and creepy, I guess. It's creepy as fuck fuck but it's so <laughs> funny um i'll if i can remember the link to it i'll leave it in the description so that everyone can watch it i don't know if i will or not but um if not just type in a new hope uh with no music or something like that without john williams's score i think was in the title but um but things always sound mental didn't they but they've got but stuff's not added like i've watched videos of like what's the is it the big bang theory yeah with no laugh I've track watched, oh it's so bad yeah but how that's do they, how do they act that's that. what like sums up what the laugh track does to a show is that it 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 makes up for something not being funny. Yeah, by forcing it. But there to is be a fun. live studio audience for the Big Bang Theory, isn't there? I don't know. I think there is, but that but they had they had the same thing with Friends. Like Friends had they they performed in front of a live studio or studio <laughs> audience. Studio. Yeah, use your words. Come on, this is a professional podcast. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Jack. Oh, I know you're a stickler for getting the oh, right words and. The right order. I'll, I'll um, be headhunted at some point. 
Yeah, but friends had a uh, had a laugh track put in afterwards because the live studio audience would go on too long or laugh uh, too weird or. That's not. right. Yeah, you know the the people in that laugh track all died like. Year, like it, that laugh track that's used in in any Hollywood production was recorded during the fifties. It's like a it's like a default stock laugh track. And the thing. laughter of like ghosts. Yeah, 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 they're all dead. Isn't that kind of creepy? That's well weird. Yeah, yeah, laugh tracks are yeah. so shit. Laugh track. You can add a laugh track to anything, and then the people with... will. It's like a cue to laugh. Yeah, the problem with like live studio audiences, audiences, is if they're <laughs> doing like a scene. <laughs> the shoes on the other foot now. Fuck off. <laughs> if they're doing like a live like a scene and it they don't get it right the first time and they have to do it like three times or something, but the third time they've heard it, it's not funny. So the crowd the audience aren't laughing as much, are they? No, yeah, but often in those scenarios laugh. they change the joke, don't they? If a joke's not if the audience doesn't laugh, the live audience doesn't laugh, they often go back and rewrite the joke well, so it becomes funnier. You're the uh T V channel executive guy here, not us. So we wouldn't really know. No, you're right. Yeah, I, mean, no, I'm telling I can't you tell you that the I mean, I'm in the business, that I had so. on my clipboard would suggest that. <laughs> Even earlier, you said like it didn't get green lit, and I was like, he's fucking knocking out these uh, these studio executive terms. Cliches, yeah. Yeah, like you you could definitely pass for one, I think. Yeah, I reckon I could. But uh, will we call that a night? That's well, we a night. We've got you now, haven't we? You've already said it. I think I think that is how it works. Yeah. <laughs> Jack, say something funny been. to post the show. Uh, say say Pop Tarts. Jack. Oh, <laughs> Tarts, nice. Oh, that's a good one, actually. Um, na, 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 na. Banter. It actually worked because we kind of talked about the Beatles. So, I think it's on the page of that. I did, don't pause. Oh. I'm drinking Diet Coke out of, like, the Domino's bag, and it looks like... You know, <laughs> you're a hobo when you yeah. drink. <laughs> I'm sort of going to cover up the top of the bottle, so it probably looks like it as well. Drinking it out of a brown paper bag. Fucking... What? For all the viewers watching. <laughs> For all the viewers. <sighs> this is my influence right here. My academic influence. One time I was in a call with Jack, and he went like, "I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take a sip of Fanta, then I'll be ready." And all I hear is like, "Ah!" <laughs> 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 like he took the biggest gulp of it ever taken. <laughs> it's like the bottle as well. Did you object to me playing? Foot manager while I'm playing this? Yeah. Why? Well, you've already... Uh, you're us. already bringing nothing to the table. <laughs> like, it's going to really affect oh, your shit. ability to communicate because I've had several conversations with you. In fact, every conversation I've ever had with you is you're doing something and I speak to you and you're like, I'll say a full sentence and start discussing the merits of that sentence and then half an hour later you'll go, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? Was that... <laughs> yeah, probably best not to. 
I mean, we're going to have some deep, deep discussions here, Joe. Yeah, this is the first actual topic we have in a long time. Um, what? Yeah, it might be, actually. Yeah, probably since the other the, the, the four-way. That's what we're going to call it from now Good. on. Good. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, like, that was important because the other Jack is actually a much better host than I am. Like, he can steer a conversation. Right. And... And you, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> You're just an enabler to me and Jack's nonsense. That's pretty much it, yeah. that That's the role I've assumed. I don't know how I've gotten this far into the podcast without people noticing that it's actually Jack's podcast. 